In this example, we're being asked to integrate an expression that has both secants and tangents in it. So this is one of those trig integrals we've been we've been talking about lately. And, uh, and so if you haven't already watched the video where we talk about integrating secants times tangents, you might want to watch that one first um, because we're going to assume that we know kind of the, the process to go through when we have both secants and tangents. Uh, very briefly, I'll give a recap that the, the basic idea is you would like to save a couple of these factors back here at the end to either be like secant x times tangent x because if you can save a secant x and tangent x um, and convert the rest of the integrand in terms of only secants, right, only secants back here, uh, kind of towards the front of the integrand, then you have a u substitution, a nice one, that uh, you have a, where you have a function of u, and this would be your du, right? The other idea, the other idea would be um, to save a secant squared, save a secant squared, if that's a possibility, and then write the rest of the integrand using trig identities in terms of only tangents, only tangents. So we either want only secants or only tangents. And, uh, and then what we want for the remaining part of the integrand is either secant tangent, which would be the, the derivative for secant, or secant squared, which is the derivative for tangent. Most integrals of this type um, usually only have one technique that will work. Normally they don't both work. Uh, for this one, if I'm, if I'm reading it right, I think I, you could actually make both of these work, believe it or not. But um, so we're, we'll just arbitrarily pick one, just whichever one you noticed, whichever one you noticed first. Okay, so um, the, just the first thing that, that popped into my mind was to save a secant tangent. Uh, you could go the other route, but, um, but that's not, not what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to save a secant x times tangent x. And then that's going to be pulled back here towards the end or the back part of the integrand. And then what's left after you save a secant and save a tangent, you would have a secant to the fifth power of x. Okay, so here's why this works out so well is um, if you now chose u to be secant of x, then your du would be what? Your du would be secant of x times tangent of x dx. So it works out perfectly. You have a function of u du. So this would become the integral of u to the fifth, right? u to the fifth du. And so it's a u substitution problem. The, the only tricky part is making a decision on who you want to save to put at the end of the integral. All right, once we have this, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, matter of fact, I might can just squeeze it up here in the corner. The integral of u to the fifth would be, um, if I take this up here, uh, integral of u to the fifth would be u to the six over six plus c. And then for our final answer, we would simply take the u out and, and use whatever we chose as our u. Uh, we would put that back in our answer. So in this case, we would get secant to the sixth power of x divided by six plus c. So that, that's the general idea. Whenever you have sines and cosines or secants and tangents or whatever the case may be, you want to save part of it to be the du, and then you want to put um, the rest of the integrand in terms of the right term such that it's a function of u that matches the du that you saved at the end.